And as you can see, when we get the ball in the wrong position, it crucifies our goal swing. It makes it so hard to produce a good, efficient swing. But it's actually very, very simple to get right. This is gonna be the only ball position video you are ever going to need to watch. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know and how having the right ball position can take your game to the next level. You do not wanna miss this video. One of the most important fundamentals we get right is having a good ball position. Have a good ball position is gonna set off a fantastic positive chain reaction in your swing. Have a bad ball position or an incorrect position then it's gonna set off a negative chain reaction. Now, why is ball position so important? Well, it depends what club we are using as to what we are trying to see at impact and how then ball position can help us. So for example, anything where it is hit straight off the ground, so we have no tee, no nothing, we need to be seeing a complete compression on that golf ball. In other words, that means we need to be hitting slightly down and forward. So there's a number that we have on all these launch monitors called angle of attack. That is how that club head is traveling into the ball. Now with wedges, with irons, with three woods even, anything we hit directly off the ground, we are gonna be seeing a descending blow onto the ball. Now this is why we will see players with irons, wedges, even hybrids off the ground, three woods off the ground, play the ball slightly further back in their stance. This is because it is going to allow them to have this little descending blow on the ball which will allow them to hit ball then ground and ultimately get good compression. However, when we have a driver, our intent is slightly different. We are trying to hit more level to slightly up. So as a result, we require a different ball position. That ball position is gonna to have to be further forwards in our stance so that we can have a neutral to slightly ascending blow on the ball. So let's now jump into what a good ball position looks like with all these different clubs and how it's gonna benefit your swing. So the first thing we need to do is change the narrative. Stop using the lower body as your reference guide. Reason being is because we all stand differently to the ball. Some people have a wider stance, some people have a narrow stance. Some people stand closed, some people stand open, some people stand square. So suddenly there's a whole load of variables going on there and what one ball position might look to one person is gonna be completely different to another person. A far more consistent and repeatable way of having a good functional ball position is using the upper body. So use the upper body, not the lower body when it comes to ball position. And we're gonna start with irons. Now ball position is very much determined based Based off what we see a lot of the best players in the world do off of impact. So with an iron, we're gonna fast forward and get to a good impact position. Now, what does that look like? Obviously, we would see a lot more pressure on our left side. We would see a little bit of what we class as right bend, some shaft lean, but most importantly, we will see the golf ball roughly positioned level with the left ear, somewhere in that region. Now, for this position here, this is gonna give us a great little descending blow, because you can see my left ear is maybe a couple of inches behind my left shoulder. This is gonna give us that slight descending blow and ultimately give us that good ball then ground contact. However, in order to sequence this position, we obviously have to shift to our left side. So with that being said, our ball position needs to accommodate for this shift. So like I said earlier on, a lot of players, and this is the most common thing I see with irons, is players get the ball way too far back. When we set up to a ball with an iron, we roughly want the ball to be somewhere around our left ear in this position. Now, a lot of you are gonna look at that and go, that's way too far forwards, but it's not. What we do in the downswing is as we turn, we turn back, we shift to our left side and we come into impact. You can see with that lateral shift, my pelvis is now further forwards. My upper body is slightly further forwards as well. I have this subtle amount of tilt and ultimately that puts me in a position where it encourages this great weight transfer. So this still applies with all clubs like a three wood, a hybrid, a long line, anything hit off the ground in that sort of position right there, we are going to see that ball be positioned somewhere underneath the left ear. Now it's slightly different for a wedge. So when we look at a wedge impact position, again, we've got to look at where is the ball relative to the upper body. So when we look at the best players in the world, we will roughly see at impact with a wedge, which I've got a 52 degree wedge here, the ball will be somewhere underneath the left eye in that position. Now again, there's going to be a lot less weight transfer because we're going to preset some of that weight on that left side with a wedge. And there is going to be a subtle amount of weight transfer, so we don't need the ball as far forwards. So when you're setting up to the ball, with a wedge, we want this to be somewhere underneath the left eye to left ear. This is gonna put us in a good position to where the ball is slightly forwards the middle, but ultimately from there, again, it's gonna encourage that little subtle weight transfer towards the target, allowing us to sequence our body. If we get the ball way too far,
our bat with a wedge, which a lot of people do, and we can talk about how moving the ball back later is gonna benefit us in certain situations. When we see this, a lot of people are then gonna shift, be way too far ahead of it, throw their angles out. This can cause thin shots, very high wedges, and ultimately poor results. Now, let's jump into the driver and let's take a look at where we want the ball to be positioned with a driver. I see a lot of players like the iron take the concept and exaggerate it too much. So with a driver, we are trying to hit level to slightly up. So what do players do? Well, they know they're supposed to play the ball forwards. So I actually see people play the ball way too far forwards in their stance. As a result, it's way outside of their left shoulder and this creates more harm than good. But I get it because they're trying to over exaggerate the concept. Well, let's now run and fast forward forward into impact. What do we tend to see with the majority of the best drivers in the world at impact? We will see that at the point of contact that the left shoulder joint to left armpit will be roughly in one straight line with the driver. We might see a tiny bit of shaft lean, but we're going to see a relative amount of a straight line between the left arm and the club and then maybe a degree or two of shaft lean, like I said. This is going to put us in a position because we've got a bit of shoulder tilt here to hit up on the ball, but it's not going to compromise the strike too much as it's going to allow us to hit the middle of the face, maybe even slightly higher up in the face to get that beautiful high launch low spin drive so with that in mind where are we looking to position the ball at address well believe it or not it's probably going to be further back than you think we want to see that ball be positioned somewhere underneath the left shoulder to left armpit at address now in this position here this gives us enough room to where we can shift our pelvis have enough right bend to hit up on the ball and ultimately from there get into that good impact position like we said so just to summarize the three ball positions, if you have a driver, we wanna be seeing that ball be positioned somewhere underneath the left armpit, left shoulder for a neutral shot. For a iron, anything from a three wood off the ground all the way down to a nine iron, we're gonna see it be positioned somewhere off the left ear. And with a wedge, it's gonna be somewhere more underneath the left eye. Now, if you've noticed, I've said a couple of times, what do we do with a three wood? Well, if the three wood is played off the ground, treat it more like an iron in terms of the ball position being off the left ear. If it's off a tee and you can tee it up a little bit higher, you are more than welcome to play it slightly further forward so it's more underneath your left armpit. So use those reference guides and it's gonna massively help you produce a good ball position to where you can be functional and produce great goal shots. So now we've gone through what a good neutral ball position looks like with all the clubs. However, we can manipulate the ball position to our advantage. Now, when we start to move ball position around, we start to change a lot of different factors. So let's run through hitting lower shots and higher shots, but also let's then run through a little bit of shot shaping and how ball position can help us achieve these results. So when we set up to a neutral iron shot, we are roughly gonna have it underneath our left ear. Now, what happens if I wanna hit a little bit more of a punch shot, a lower shot? Well, what I can do is put the ball slightly further back in my stance. Now, what we are doing here is we are hitting the ball earlier on in the arc. So this is gonna change a couple of things. Number one, it's gonna change our angle of attack. It's gonna make us come down steeper, but it's also going to change our club path. Now the steeper angle of attack is going to allow us to hit the ball a little bit lower. We can also put a little bit more shaft lean in there. Again, that's gonna produce a little bit more of a penetrating flight. However, because we've moved the ball back in the stance, it actually means we've shifted our path a little bit more to the right. So as a result of this, what we will need to do, if we want to hit a relatively straight punch shot, when you move that ball slightly further back, so let's say we move it from the left ear to maybe underneath our nose, we do need to open our stance up a fraction to counteract that change in the path. Conversely, if we want to hit the ball a little bit higher, again, producing a little bit of a shallower angle of attack can help us hit that ball a little bit higher. So we might want to move that ball a fraction further forwards. Now, again, always be careful moving the ball further forwards. Reason being is it promotes that sort of fat shot just because then we're getting the ball very close to the lowest point of our swing, very hard to time. But we can move that ball a little bit further forwards. And again, that is going to put the ball further up in the arc. It's going to shallow out our strike, our angle of attack but that has also changed the club path slightly. Because we're hitting it later on, it's gonna angle the path a little bit more to the left. So if you do wanna hit a little bit of a higher shot and you wanna move that ball position slightly further forwards, just make sure you just slightly close off the stance and the shoulders in order just to counteract that. 
So that's how we can change ball position to help us hit high and low shots. Now we can use ball position to our advantage when trying to hit shot shapes as well. So if we're trying to hit a draw or a fade, we can also use ball position to help us with this. So let's start with a draw. If we want to hit a bit more of a draw, we need to understand how changing the ball position can also change the club path. So like we've been saying, if we move the ball slightly further back in the stance, it is going to promote a path that swings more to the right and a face that also points more to the right. So when we move into shot shaping later down the line in later videos, we will run through this in more detail. But if I take my ball position, which is usually underneath my left eye here, my left ear, and I move it back a hair to maybe underneath my left eye, what I've done there is moved it further back in the stance, in the arc, but I've also shifted my path slightly more to the right. So you might see people who are really trying to hit a little bit of a draw. They might set up, they might do a couple of other changes, but one of the changes might be they just shuffle that ball slightly further back in the arc, this is then going to allow them to get that path naturally shifted a little bit more to the right. Conversely, the other applies if we move the ball position slightly further forwards. Not only is that going to shallow us out a little bit, but it's also going to shift the path slightly to the left. Again, that can help us promote a little bit more of a fade shape. So moving ball position can not only change high and low ball flights, it can also change the shot shape, the right to left, the left to right. So we can use this variable to our advantage. So bear that in mind. If you're trying to hit a little bit more of a draw, maybe pay attention to the ball position being a little bit further back in the stance. If you're trying to hit a little bit more of a fade, maybe move it up just a fraction. Now, what I would say is we never want to go too extreme with this. Again, ball position is only one of the factors that can help us with shot shaping and trajectory control. There are many other factors that can help us with it. So now you fully understand where we need to position the ball in our stance. It is absolutely crucial that we position the ball relative to our upper body, not our feet. Then from there, if we get the right ball position, it's going to set off a positive chain reaction. As well as this, we've also gone into how you can manipulate the golf ball to your advantage to help you hit higher, lower, right to left or left to right golf shots. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give me a like and subscribe. I'll be posting a lot more videos like this in the near future. And if you have any video requests, then please let me know down below in the comment section. I hope to see you back here soon.